Hi everyone, welcome to part 1 of 2 of our tutorial series on Canon 8K 180VR stereo workflows. Thanks to Sam Bommel for providing some footage for this tutorial. See some of his work on sambommel.com. Now, in this video we'll be looking at importing Canon 180VR stereo clips into Scratch, flagging them correctly as 180VR stereo clips to view inside a headset, applying an ST map to unwarp the fisheye footage, primary grade the footage and finally transcode it to a different format to work with down the line. In the second part I'll show you how to work in a true stereo VR environment, grade left and right eye separately, retouch the footage using vector paint and export to different stereo patterns. Alright, let's get started. We have two clips in 8K resolution on disk here. One is a Canon RAW shot in the CRM format, the other one is an H.265 encoded MP4 in 10 bit. Scratch can work with both and the process is exactly the same, independent from the source format. When importing footage the first time, Scratch will ask whether to adapt the project and current timeline settings to reflect the frame rate, resolution and aspect of the clips I'm importing. If we do not do that but still want to quickly have our timeline adapt to the clips, we can simply drag and drop one clip onto the label down here and as you can see, now our timeline is set to 8K resolution. For now, I'll just use the H.265 clip and duplicate it a couple of times to simulate multiple clips in our timeline. Here we go. Let's take a quick look at our footage by going to Color Effects. I can enter Color Effects by either double clicking the clip in question or by just switching the tabs at the bottom. Scratch will then enter into color effects with a selected clip either way. Once inside the color effects tab, we can still navigate between clips using the mini timeline here in the center of the UI. Let's jump back to the first clip. In the viewport, you can zoom by alt dragging up and down and pan by space dragging. While our clip seems to look good, at this point Scratch is still unaware that this is actually a 180 degree stereo clip. So when hitting the globe icon here, nothing happens. Also, the view in our attached headset won't look correct. So the first thing we want to take care of is telling Scratch that these clips are actually 180 degree stereo clips. You can do that on a clip by clip basis by going to the right side stack and changing the corresponding drop downs here. If I exit to the construct tab, you can find the exact same metadata stack here as well on the far right. However, to change it for multiple clips at once, we need to select all of them by pressing Ctrl or Command A and then open Media Browser. Media Browser is your friend whenever you want to do something to multiple clips at once. And here in the Base tab, we can set those two dropdowns for all selected clips in one go. Done. Back to the Construct tab. Now let's check back into Color Effects again. If we now hit the globe icon, Scratch will show just one eye and allow us to pan around in the view. For this, we can also use the pan zoom tool from the top menu bar. Our headset will obviously get both eyes for a proper stereo view. Next up is applying the ST map to all clips in order to unwarp the fisheye footage. Let's create a layer and call it ST map. Next, Go to Plugins and select the Lens Undistort plugin in order to add it onto the layer. With that layer selected, the Note menu shows the plugin controls and we can now load our ST map, which we have on disk in the form of an open XR frame. Let's also enable ST mode. Here we go. If we now pan around in 180 view mode, this looks pretty good. If we wanted to store this layer as a preset, we can simply drop it into the gallery right here. On another shot, we can then drag it out and drop it back into the layer stack. But that's not how we're going to copy the ST map onto all clips. Let me delete this and go back to the first clip. Now before we copy our layer, let's add one more layer and call it Grade. On this layer, we can load a lookup table or grade the image manually. Let's just add a little contrast by dialing up the S-curve parameter here. And maybe add a little bit of saturation to the mix. Our scopes show if we're clipping anywhere. By the way, numeric parameters in Scratch are changed by clicking into them and then circling around them just like dialing a virtual knob. 
control click will reset them. Okay, now to copy all this to all other clips in our timeline, here's what we do. First, select the primary layer here in the layer stack. This is important so that when I click the copy button over here, the entire grade and not only the contents of any selected secondary layer are copied into the copy buffer. Now I can either move to the next clip or simply stay on the current clip and hit paste again. In the paste menu I can select which properties I want to paste. I'll just leave it all enabled. Important though, I do not want to add layers, but replace anything I have on the clip. Otherwise I double the layers on this particular clip since that already has the layers I'm copying present. Lastly, instead of just hitting paste, hit paste forward and confirm twice. This function pastes the grade forward to all following clips in the timeline. Alright, now that we have unwarped and graded our timeline, all that's left to do is render stuff out. Let's jump to the render tab for this. Here we have our main output node, which by the way dictates our timeline's resolution, frame rate and aspect. So if I change those parameters here, they will be changed for the timeline. If we just want to render out our content in its native resolution, we would just add a ProRes encoder node for instance and select the ProRes flavor of choice here in the Format Settings tab. By the way, Scratch supports ProRes encoding on macOS and Windows equally. Since we want to render out separate files again, we need to set a specific file name. Click the Set button right here. As you can see, the output file name is made up of hash code tokens. Right now, it uses the name of this output node, which will result in one big long file. Not what we want. To render out single clips again, we need to add a criteria to the file mask spec that changes from clip to clip. Typically, you can just use hashtag SName for the source name, since the source name of each clip will be different from the others. So if Scratch now renders this timeline, the output file name will change with each clip rendered and hence force Scratch to render individual files. Now in our particular case where I simply duplicated the first clip and hence all clips have the same source name, I would need to add another criteria to the file mask spec. Slot number. As that is unique for every given clip, I can simply add this hash code before or after hashtag SName and divide the two with an underscore. This of course also helps if I have a clip split up into two in my timeline. You can use any number of tokens here. I could for instance add hashtag res to get the resolution into the file name. And I can add slashes in to create complete folder structures, like creating a folder called editorial, or use hashtag date to create a folder with the current date. This file mask can be saved as a template to be recalled on other output nodes. Let's close this and add something else into our tree. Let's assume we want to have a downscaled H.264 export for simple online review. In that case, we will add a transformer node and set its resolution to HD. Right now, we'd be applying a center crop of the full res 8K frame. So let's go to the Format Settings tab and set the input scaling to fit width. And our footage is scaled down to HD. The transformer node can also be used to do color space conversions, specific grades and much more. Right after, we can add the H.264 encoder node, configure it according to our needs in the Format Settings tab and also apply our known file mask spec. Maybe let's change editorial here to online review. Done. Of course, we can also save this entire tree as a template. For this, make sure you first select the main output node and then save the template down here in the lower left corner. On any new timeline, we can recall the output tree from here. If we exit the project real quick, we can also define this output tree as the default for all new timelines in the project settings. Back into our project. If I now create new timelines inside this project, they will already have this output tree attached and be ready to go. Now, to finally render out our content, all we have to do is select the nodes we want to render and either render them right away or add them to the process queue and then fire off the render queue. 
While Scratch is rendering, we can keep on working on other timelines if we want. That's it for part 1 on working with Canon VR 180 stereo footage. See you in part 2.